I want to chat about some comics we brought because that's what we do here on the Bags and Boards podcast. We deal with so many comics that sometimes I'll even miss the comics that Jeff is hyped about because by the time that we see each other next, even if it's a short week, oh, the book's already in the hands of two other people because it was bought, sold, bought, and sold. But hey, you should have been here when I got it in the mail. So now I'm just open invitation, bring whatever you have and want to have my mind blown. And I'm going to try to do the same to the community. We're just going to bring some stuff we recently got. What kind of item did you bring today? Is this like a spec book, a PC book? What's going on? Yeah, I'm going to keep this in the PC for now. Okay. It's kind of a, a spec book. Mine's also why. PC as well. It's it, Last time you were here, we talked about spec books. So it's, it's kind of fun. Yeah, so I've always loved this book. All right, it's a Fantastic Four number 12. Classic Kirby cover. Um, Hulk first thing, meet for the very first time. Amazing, just awesome classic book. Shout out to A1 Comics, who I got it from. Thanks for the hookup. They did it. Um, gave me a decent price on it. So I, I really appreciate that. But I bought this too because... We know how fast this market's moving. And I'm watching all these big keys and FF books. And just seeing this one just kind of sit a little stagnant. On this book that no one was specking on. Exactly, Russ. Thank you. <laughs> but when I, when I look at this book, I, I just see nothing but growth. And for me, instead of it being a classic cover, I don't understand, like, it's easy to follow a little bit of a crowd of people investing in books. You're like, oh, okay, that's the hot book. I'll get into a hot book. You, you kind of also want to look at the ones that are not at the time. And this is for me one that isn't, but at a six, five, it's a very solid copy. It's got beautiful colors. Sometimes you see with those gray covers, you see smudging like Spidey six can be very notorious for those grays all smudging, but that book doesn't have any of it. It's got great eye appeal. It's a six, five classic book. Love it. Love it. Love it. There's a 6.5 off-white pages, Fantastic Four number 12 from 1963. And we have just the classic trade dress on there, the world's greatest comic magazine. And this is, at last, the Fantastic Four meeting the Hulk. It says it right on the cover. He says, another second and I'll destroy them all. That's what the Hulk says. And then you have Johnny Flame saying, the Hulk is nearby, I can feel it. This right here is a book-length epic. Need we say more? This is the first time... The Hulk meets the first Marvel family. It's classic, man. Like, how many times have, or every time you see a Hulk versus Thing cover, it's considered to be a classic battle. True. All right? Silver Surfer versus Thor. Hulk versus Thor. For me, again, early Silver Age. First really Marvel title that just exploded and saved Marvel's butt. FF. This is really freaking cool. Do you mind sharing what you paid for it in this market? Yeah, I paid 2700 Nice. This is a good, good deal. I, I would assume three grand minimum. Yeah, I think it was a great price. Super excited for it. I think it's probably, you know, 3200 But this book should be more. That's just it. Like, can you imagine when they have FF come out? Because I think it's supposed to come out in 2025, I believe, that Hulk and FF meet. Can you just imagine, especially if it's on bad terms some for some reason, like... I don't know. That would just be epic. A Hulk versus Thing battle. Can't wait. It's going to be amazing. We also have some books that I have been after for, dude, quite a long time. eBay tip for the comic fam. You need to be utilizing your saved search function. A lot of people don't do this. This is like as important as utilizing GPA, you know, utilizing key collector comics. You need to save your searches. You need to be notified if one of your searches comes up in the marketplace, some of these comics, they show up really quick and they'll be gone within 10 minutes because there's other people utilizing the save search function. There's a little heart right at the top of the eBay search link after you type in what you're looking for. And this, these two listings have been on my eBay save search for de a decade, for sure. Probably over a decade at this point. I mean, I've been looking for these two items Longer than I've been collecting Hellboy, really, because I got into collecting Hellboy after I secured some books and decided I wanted to expand it. And then I sold all my Hellboy collectibles, even some of my Mignola original art. I didn't have anything too crazy, but like I had sketches and stuff like that to fund the show. 
you know, I invested my Mignola art and stuff into the microphones and the cameras and things like that. I'm not collecting Hellboy anymore because of it. I've collected so much and I wasn't, I was only like unable to get a couple issues. And maybe if one of those ever pop up and I have an opportunity, maybe I'll grab that. But I don't ever see myself re-hunting these books that I sought out for so long. But these came up and I was in disbelief that they came up that I had to buy them. It just, it felt wrong not to buy them. They were each a couple hundred bucks. And I was fortunate because I think I would be competing with numerous Hellboy collectors for these particular collectibles had they not been in one listing with multiple issues in the same listing. What I'm holding here is a comics buyer's guide, issue number 1069 and 1070. Can you describe what you're looking at here? They're pretty big. Yeah, they are big. Here you go. And they're, they're pretty trashed. I mean, these are things that don't come on the market very often. And these things weren't meant to keep, you know? No. It's like a newspaper. Yeah, exactly. It's the newsprint type feel to it. Uh, How large is that? This is like, you know. It's like Life Magazine size at there least. You go. If you know what those, those guys are. But yeah. they're, they're big. Yeah, bigger than I'd 12 say. inches on the, you know, on yeah. the length for sure. Yeah, exactly. It, it's huge. All right. So I see this is like 1994. It says May 13th. That's right. Got Mike Mignola's Hellboy on here. And like, I don't know, um, Four Horsemen maybe behind him. That's right. We have the uh, Seed of Destruction. Um, this is a, well, actually, yeah, that's a Seed of Destruction um, advertisement. And this would have been coming out right around the time that Hellboy would pick up his own solo series. And yes, it comes out in 1994. But what's cool about that, if you can find the Mignola section, it's only a couple of pages. This particular um, newsprint was a solicitation magazine where you can order things from. A lot of independent stuff is in here. And they featured Hellboy. And in 1994, there's only a handful of Hellboy appearances prior to this. This was right at the heart of Hellboy becoming a his own character, really. And what's fun about the Mignola section, aside from seeing a really young picture of Mignola, which you'll f probably get a kick out of, we also have pages of San Diego Comic-Con issue number two. And when you see it, you'll, you'll know for sure. Um, San Diego Comic-Con issue number two debuted in August 1993. So we're talking about less than a year later. In 1994, we have a, essentially a reprint of his first appearance from a convention comic book. There you go, right there. Oh, this is it, huh? Yeah, so you have Seed of Destruction there, Mike Mignola interview, and look at that top right picture of Mike Mignola. Wow, that's a nice scarf. He's, got a, he's rocking that scarf, man. He is. He is. And, of course, at the very bottom, you have the pages that were provided during San Diego Comic-Con in 1993. This is so, pretty cool, man. It's a cool advertisement. It's the first appearance of Hellboy, I believe, in reprint done for the first time. I mean, a lot of those weren't, wasn't reprinted. I could be wrong about that. I need to go through now all my other ones to check dates, but this was a bonus. I wasn't really hunting this issue. I actually bought this issue by mistake. I didn't know Hellboy was on the cover of issue 1069. I was actually hunting for another issue and it turned out I should have just checked my key collector app because it said it right on key collector that it was 1,070 that you actually need to look for because that is the next one. And fortunately, the person had this one as well. So I was able to score both of these. They weren't in the title. They were, I mean, they were in the title, but it wasn't like a picture in the listing. So a lot of people wouldn't know to look for this, but you'll see exactly what I'm looking for here. Wow. There is a comic size insert, one page. More than one page. Two page. Oh, I mean, it's one page that's folded in, in you know, folded front and back. So it's te technically four pages of art that's stapled in the inside of this magazine, this newspaper magazine, if you would. And this right here is an insert in Comics Buyer's Guide 1070. And Key Collector um, records this as the following. A four-page black and white story inserted inside the Comics Buyer's Guide, written and illustrated by Mike Mignola, Reprinted in Hellboy's Seat of Destruction in 1995's Collector's Addiction in 2018's Omnibus. This wasn't reprinted until 2018 in a physical form. If you wanted this short story, 
if you wanted to see some of the earliest Mignola Hellboy work, you would have had to purchase this giant newspaper style collectible and go for that insert that was largely removed. And I'll tell you, as a Hellboy collector, these would sell between $200 and $400 insert alone, not with the you know, giant paper that surrounds it protecting it. And the reason why I know this is because I not only have been collecting this insert for over six years now, I actually have a variant of the insert. So take a look at this so you can actually see that you'll see the staple mark on the, on the side of the comic, right? Yeah, a single yeah. staple mark. So the rumor is, is that in production, they, that's what they did. They, they stapled it on the inside of this giant newspaper. However, there was in excess of 20 to 30 copies of this, per, this uh, two-page spread, all right? And those copies were not inserted. Thus, they did not get the staple inside. And that's the indicator that you have one of these very rare extras that were printed. And this is my copy. Wait, so, okay, hold on. So this was supposed to be stapled in, but it never got stapled in. So was it just placed in and the staple strike missed? No, it was, the rumor is that there were under 30 of them created in access. And this is one of those 30. Oh, so they just got out into the market at some point. Exactly. You know, there was wow. a stack that made it out. So that is what I ended up hunting for for a very long time. And I was able to find one of those prior to finding the actual comics buyer's guide newspaper, you know, life-size magazine style that this is intact, let alone just the magazine. So it's, I don't know. Am I getting back into Hellboy collecting? Probably not. But this was one of those situations where I've waited so damn long to see that update on my eBay search, save search portion of the app that I didn't buy it at first. And then I started feeling this four letter abbreviation FOMO, F-O-M-O. I went to bed thinking about it. I went to the claim sale that we went, that we hosted on your Instagram, follow Golden Age Guru on IG. We do monthly claim sales. I felt it throughout that live session that we did. I checked my phone to make sure it was still there. And I'm like, no, I don't want it. And then I went home and I bought it. I had to have it. I had a legit fear of not seeing this for another decade. And I didn't want to just not, own this collectible. So now I got to find some bag and board that'll fit this damn thing. But it's pretty dope nonetheless. Yeah, it's super spectacular. And I'll tell you why it's appealing to me. Outside of, you know, I do like Mignola and the black and white and the... And the, the king of negative heavy, space, man. Yeah, the heavy shading. This is very much like a Golden Age cover. This is like a science comics early issue. You have... Doesn't it feel like it? It does. You got this hypodermic needle cover. You have a bondage scene. You have the hero crashing in. You have the German swastika soldier robot head or whatever's going in the corner. I mean, this ape with a mechanical arm, you know, it's just, uh, it screams that era, um, but still updated in manual style. So it's, it's super appealing. It's even got a little skull cover down here. I mean, it's got everything that I love <laughs> for that type of, for an updated book, you know? Absolutely. Comic fam, what do you think about Mignola's art? You know, he's one of my all-time favorite creators in comics, but artists in general. 